Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the 2000 version, starring Jim Carrey, Christine Baranski, and Jeffrey Tambor, and directed by Ron Howard. And before I get into this movie at all, let's first things first bring up the 1960s version of The Grinch, animated series that was 20 minutes long. I only, ha I can't do it because... I, I do movies that are like an hour long. This is 20 minutes long. So let, let's just say that I like that one so much more than any of the two movies that I'm about to discuss. Well, one of them tonight and one of them next week. But I do like the way how some of the sounds were. And I did grow up with it as a kid. And I thought those this was good. Um, like It was a good time to watch that stuff from the 1960s, and I would give that thing around a nine, I would say. Maybe late eight, early nines or something. So I do own that Blu-ray, it's just, I just can't review it because it's 20 minutes long and I like to review an hour or longer movies. But now that I got that over with, let's talk about this Grinch with Jim Carrey. I remember when the trailers came out, I was afraid of Jim Carrey's take of the Grinch because of his look. And I'll talk about Rick Baker's makeup in, at some point in the movie, but did it frighten me when I saw it? I got over it. And what does it mean now? Like, does it mean I'm going to like this movie? Well, let's get into it and we'll find out. In the city of Whoville, every who that lives in Whoville likes Christmas a lot. And the narration by Anthony Hopkins, and I like this, and I like that um, voiceover for this version, I'll say. And I like the set decoration in Whoville as we meet Lulu Who, who goes Christmas shopping with his daughter Cindy Lou Who, who's going to be one of the main characters throughout the movie. And let me just say right now, that character was not the main character in the 1960s version but let's move on and the creature who lives up the north of whoville called the grinch played by jim carrey and i kind of prefer boris karloff's take honestly but this was a comedic version i'll say hates christmas and the who's in whoville that he visits whoville then next thing in you no know, he scares the four who's away two guys and two girls and then, next thing you know, he visits Whoville with his dog, Max, in a disguise. And a couple of Cindy Lou's brothers visit the Grinch, like I said earlier. That was the four guys. Or, no, two guys, excuse me. And the two girls, I don't know who they are. And warns them about him as Mayor Augustus Mayhew, played by Jeffrey Tambor, who writes a Who book about the law of, who, of the Who's. And I relate to the Grinch and Cindy Lou more than any of the Who's in Whoville as they're, in my opinion, uglier than the Grinch. And the makeup of, on the Grinch by Rick Baker is fantastic, because it did make me scared when I first came into the theater, but the Who's look absolutely terrible, and the plot was sort of the same as the original cartoon, but with some different twists. And then we meet Betty Lou Who, who's Cindy Lou's mother, and played by Molly Shannon and her neighbor Martha May, who Huvier, let's say, played by Christine Baranski, who's a bland character. But Molly Shannon is a good actress, but she's not great either. The movie has a song invented by Cindy Lou in this movie, I'll say, and it will show up again in the Christmas. I mean, in the credits, I meant, where it is about where Christmas is. And I sort of like the song. It's just, is it necessary to put it in the movie? Maybe it is. I couldn't really tell you. Maybe it isn't. But I'm not crazy about the song. I'll just say that much. The soundtrack to this movie, with an exception of Welcome Christmas and You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, is not the most necessary, in my opinion. The Grinch talks to himself and hears a voice saying, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. You, you get the point. And eats a glass, and how can the Grinch live like that is beyond me. 
We get Cindy Lou asking about the Grinch's backstory, starting with him as a baby stuck on a tree, but there's more. He's in school with other children, including Martha May and Augustus, and Augustus bullies the Grinch around with his beard, and Martha May has some kind of crush on the Grinch, as he realizes he has a crush on Martha May, and the young Grinch shaves his beard and gives Martha May a present, and the next day, the Grinch is heartbroken because of all the kids laughing at him, for shaving his beard off as Cindy Lou is heartbroken by the story and it's heartbreaking to me but it's not saying much as far as I'm concerned. The Grinch realizes Christmas is the next day and Mayor Augustus has a party on that very night at Christmas Eve and Cindy Lou nominates the Grinch for an award because in the book of who they should have the holiday spirit with anyone including the Grinch. So they give the nomination to the Grinch as long as he shows up. Cindy Lou goes up to the Grinch's lair to invite him to the party as she enters his lair, and the Grinch goes crazy as he tries to scare Cindy Lou, but is unsuccessful. She invites him to the party, and reluctantly he accepts as he tries some costumes and decides not to go until Max forces the Grinch to go to in the garbage disposal, which looks like a fun ride at Universal Studios Hollywood. I'm not going to lie to you there. The party begins without the Grinch at first, as Mayor Augustus almost gives himself the award, but the Grinch arrives and becomes the star of the show until I... until... and I do think Jim Carrey is really funny and good as and as good as the Grinch. Augustus gives the Grinch a shaving Christmas present, and proposes to Martha May, and the Grinch is upset and burns the giant Christmas tree in Whoville. And I love the way the Grinch says, Evening, folks. Mind if I ride along? You might want to scooch over. <sighs> I use that line on people sometimes when I fake, when sometimes to fake with them when I'm, when I am cracking up and trying to sit down on them. And I'm cracking up during that scene. In particular, and, and maybe the best scene in the movie, in my opinion. And it's not in the book, but or in the original cartoon, but it was still a fun, funny scene. The Grinch thinks about Christmas, the next day, which is Christmas morning, where he goes, Oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise! Moving on. And thinks about how to stop Christmas from coming and throws Max out and it gives him an idea dressing up like santa claus and stealing christmas from the who's and makes everything prepared except for he forgot a reindeer it makes max the reindeer by giving him the antlers and they go down in Ho to whoville and i do like well i like the original version of you're a mean one mr grinch more than this version i'll say i'll even like it better than next week's i'll say that much but they go down to Whoville and steal every single Christmas decoration, presents, and feast, and at one point bumps into Cindy Lou as she thinks the Grinch is sweet and is sort of heartwarmed, and he goes back into character and steals more Christmas decorations, presents, and feast, and almost gets away with it by going up the mountain and hears the Who singing instead of crying. And the song they sing is Welcome Christmas. And Cindy Lou comes up to the Grinch's mountain as he's pushing down the Christmas stuff and his heart grew into a big heart and Cindy Lou arrives on top of the sleigh as the Grinch shaves the sleigh and comes down with Max and Cindy Lou to bring back everything as he confesses and apologizes for stealing Christmas and Martha May breaks up with Augustus to be the, with the Grinch and sings welcome Christmas with the Who's and has a feast with them. And the climax is the same as the cartoon 20 minute show and it's adequate at best, I'll say. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 4.8 out of 10. I'll start with the positives. I like the mad makeup of the Grinch and the Christmas scene when the Grinch burns the Christmas tree was the best scene in the whole movie. And Jim Carrey did do a pretty good job as the as the Grinch, but unfortunately, the Who's looked mo so much uglier than the Grinch, and the story was a little weak, 
and it's not as good as the 1960s animated 20-minute show, and it's not quite the holiday movie I'm looking for, so that's why I'm mildly not recommending the movie at this point. Just a mild one. I wish I could like it better than I did. I wish I could like it better than I do right now. I'll just say that much. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with another animated Grinch story, but this time it's an hour and a half short. And it's the one with the voice of Benedict Cumberbatch as the Grinch. And until next time, it's time to steal Christmas, Mr. Grinch.